Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Pivoted Success Podcast, hosted by our friend Sean Cochran from TCC Canada and myself, Jared Goldsmith from ESAC's Virtual Events. Today, we're very pleased to be welcoming Sandra Plagakis of The Cherry. Sandra, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for saying my last name correctly. And thank you for naming my business correctly, because some people call it the Cherie or something like that. So I appreciate that you got it right. I do. No, I mean, yeah, we, we could have gone another 10 minutes trying to get it right. Now, Sandra, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about your background. Who are you and what's the Cherry all about? Uh, uh, well, uh, as you uh, know, my name is Sandra Plagakis, and I'm actually, um, I wouldn't call myself an entrepreneur. Maybe I would call myself a new entrepreneur. I'm actually a career radio broadcaster. I've been a broadcaster for ooh, 27 years. Nobody start doing the math on my age. Thanks. Um, and I've been doing morning radio in Ottawa specifically uh, since 2004. Three, having worked at um, KISS 105.3 for really the biggest chunk of that time here in Ottawa. Right. So right now I, I actually do the morning show on KISS Ottawa, uh, the Sandra and Chris show, and uh, I am the Sandra of that show. Thank oh, you. Fantastic. Well, thank you for, for taking the time to join us today, Sandra. Now let's talk a little bit about The Cherry. What's it all about and how did it begin? Well, you know, it's a it's a funny thing because, you know, you talk about businesses uh, that have thrived during the pandemic. I just found myself to have a lot of time during the pandemic. I still went to work every day and I still did my morning show and I did my, you know, my my uh, 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. job, if you will. But uh, all of the events that I would typically do especially in 2020, well, there weren't any events. So again, I found myself to have a lot of time on my hands. And um, that is how the cherry, I guess, came into development because I had all this time in, in my hands and I have a business partner named Doug Bates and the two of us got together and started chatting about the possibility about starting a seasonal subscription box that targeted women. And that really was how the cherry was born. It is a lifestyle box, a women's lifestyle box. Um, it is fun, flirty, and a little dirty is what we say. And if you're thinking, what does that mean? I will say this, um, think again, women's lifestyle in terms of the products, which are luxury items for women, you know, you have your makeup, lifestyle brands, et cetera. And then we offer a really cool edge to it. Every box offers a dirty little surprise, which we do not reveal on social media or anywhere. You only find out what it is upon, um, uh, once you receive the box, you uh, you get to find out what the dirty little secret is. It's not, as, it's not what you're thinking because everybody thinks, uh-oh, don't tell me it's that kind of a box. It is not that kind of a box. It is edgy, but we're just a little dirty and, you know, you can handle it. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Um, listen, Sandra, how were you affected by COVID? You know, when, when everything closed down in the before times uh, as a radio personality, what, what happened to you? What was your story? Well, um, <laughs> having been in radio for so long, I have to say that I've obviously experienced nothing like COVID before, but I still had to go in every day and do a radio show in studio with an audience that was dwindling and working from home and listenership was down. I mean, thank God for things like Google Home and those home listening devices. They sort of saved us in many ways. Um, so I still went in every day and tried to do a fun, positive, uh, musically, driven, entertaining show every day. And I have to say it was the most challenging thing I've ever experienced because um, it was lonely really, because you, it, you know we didn't have the interaction that we would normally have in non COVID times. Um, so it was nice that we did have some interaction and people would call us and say, you know, hey, it's so great. <laughs> There's somebody on the radio and it just feels like we're not alone and we could connect that way. but. Honestly, it was a very difficult time. Yeah. So, Sandra, the idea of the cherry, was that always brewing in the back of your mind, or did it take the big shutdown of 2020 <laughs> to, to start those entrepreneurial juices? Yeah, I know. Uh, I thought about doing a subscription box several years ago It, it because I am a fan of receiving subscription boxes, and I have subscribed over the years to multiple different kinds of boxes, and I really love the experience. It's like a little gift that you give to yourself, either monthly or seasonally, and it's just um, it's just fun. Even you know the box comes, you open it up, and I just I love that experience. Um, so I had toyed with the idea a few years ago, but then I just I'm I'm, a, I'm 
typically quite busy with events, uh, you know, one or two events a week. The morning show really beats the hell out of you because you're exhausted all the time. So I just, I didn't have the energy to be perfectly honest. And I had a kid in competitive sports. So I was like, oh my God, no. So I talked myself out of doing it. And then COVID forced me to slow down. It forced me to come home every day and breathe, spend time with my family, and then truly think about what it was that I wanted to do. And radio is a volatile business. Media is a volatile business, to say the least. And um, not to say that I fear um, for my job every day, because I don't, um, but I wanted to maybe be the architect of my life. Meaning I wanted to create something that belonged to me, that I could build. There was no pressure to become a conglomerate tomorrow. I could build it slowly at my own pace. And that really is how the cherry was born. Do you think that uh, during COVID, well, you mentioned that you had more time on your hands, right? Mm -hmm. We're staying home more, obviously. Do you think that the whole concept of entrepreneurship has grown because of the situation during COVID? Oh, a hundred percent. Most definitely. Um, you know, again, because I work in media, I have access to news wires and so on. I've been reading a lot about COVID and uh, the way things have shifted. And I, there's no question that more and more people have owned the fact that they're dissatisfied with their current jobs and are starting to build their own companies and they want to uh, work for themselves. And, you know, in a perfect world, that's really the name of the game. That's what we all want. Yeah, to be our own boss and, and set our own hours as long as we can make ends meet and still have money coming in. Well, that's, that's also the name part. of the game, isn't it? If you can make money, that's kind of the bonus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because a lot, a lot of the times we talk about entrepreneurship, about those who start with a hobby and they still have the day job to make ends meet. And then COVID hit and they think, what would I do if I could turn my hobby into a full-time job and they might spend more time than normal? Less time watching TV, more time listening to you on the radio, and then more time working on their business. Yeah. And it's funny because with the cherry, obviously we are curating new boxes all the time, every season. I'm cur currently in the process of curating our winter box. Our fall box is currently out and on sale. But, you know, a big part of it is that we ha I, I have to be plugged into what is going on. What are the businesses? What can, right. what are the products that are available? And there are so many great local entrepreneurs, not just in Ottawa, but Ontario and Canada that we have connected with. Great soap companies, candle companies, those kinds of things. And, uh, I feel like, you know, my mind is kind of blown by the incredible talent that exists in Canada because it's it's great. And we're just happy to be able to support them as we can. Is that uh, one of your sort of um, differentiators, as you'd put it then, Sandra, for your boxes, that it is all Canadian made stuff or is that... I'm not going to say Canadian made because not everything is Canadian made. No, that fair is, enough. Uh, uh, Canadian owned is really where it was born and we are trying our best. We're not living and dying by that uh, at the moment uh, because Canadian manufacturing is expensive and it's very hard to curate a box that doesn't cost a fortune because those obviously those costs would be passed on to our cherries as we call them. And I want to be able to put out an affordable box, but something that you will buy and be proud of and be able to say, yeah, I'm supporting Canadian as best we can. So yes, we have Canadian designers in our box and those kinds of things, but yeah, not everything is Canadian made. Mm -hmm. And how have you helped others to adapt, Sandra? I mean, on your radio show, do you invite live guests or is it mostly you talk about the news stories? And Jared, it's me talking about myself for three and a half hours and I'm okay with that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, you know, actually a big part of what we did at the start of the pandemic was a support local campaign. So we would give shout outs to the businesses that were um, trying to make ends meet at the beginning of the pandemic. Remember when we were just learning about curbside pick pickup and businesses were trying to get that information out about how you could support them. So we were I would say one of, I mean, we weren't the only radio station, all of Ottawa media came together and really helped support so many great and deserving local businesses. So I, that was really in my mind, the, I think the most important way and the most, the way I am most proud of, honestly. Sean, you have, you have something you'll ask? Yeah. So Sandra, I was just going to ask, I know uh, sort of professionally you were affected by COVID like we all were and things sort of slowed down. Um, 
how was it for you personally? How did you find things when we sort of hit that wall back in March? Um, the first two months were were hard going into work and cracking that mic and being positive and not mm -hmm. turning it into a doom and gloom show about COVID numbers. That was challenging. That was that was all uh, <laughs> that was a whole lot of bullshit. I'll be honest with you. Uh, that was um, that was um, the most challenging two months of my career. If I had to pinpoint March and April of 2020 were difficult. Uh, personally speaking, honestly, I didn't mind that I didn't have events to go to because I, I never stopped. I kind of am a workaholic and I like to go to events. I like to do charity work. I like to host a bit. I like to do all of that stuff and help as much as possible. And um, I didn't mind slowing down so much. I liked maybe reconnecting with my two sons. Uh, and I, I've actually, I'm not gonna say rebuilt, but I was closer to my 20 year old son than I was with my 18 year old son. And now I can say that I'm close to both of my sons in a way that I probably never would have been had it not been for COVID. Mm. I was, you know what, the unthinkable happened. I talked to my teenagers, it's true. What? Whereas before that really wasn't happening because we all led such busy lives, but it was delightful. It was terrifying. I mean, obviously COVID was scary and they were out of school and it, it affected our mental health as a family for sure. But at the same time, it, we grew closer as a family. Mm. What does, um your thinking hat. Let's put your future fedora on, Sandra. And what, oh my what, God, a fedora! I love it. That's all what I about you? <laughs> Oh, I can't get enough either. It's awesome. Let's talk about <laughs> what are you most excited about? Let's say in six months or a year down the road from now. Um, with my radio career or with the cherry? Because right now I feel like the cherry has all the possibilities, and well, I am super with the cherry, excited. And then we can talk about the radio side. Okay, uh, the Cherry really, although it was in development in 2020, really only launched in May of 2021 with our summer box. And we're currently in our fall box. So we've only put out two subscription boxes at the moment. So I don't know what's gonna happen in six months. Every, I mean, we've only done the two boxes and I'm currently curating the winter box. Every single season has felt different. I'm learning, I'm growing. I realized at the beginning of it, I knew nothing about being a business person. Uh, I'm starting from the ground up. It is harder than I thought to sell things. What, what were some of the, the aha moments, not having much of an entrepreneurship background that you realized, this is harder than I thought. Oh my God, you think you're gonna put out this box and you think the entire world is gonna go, wait, what? I need to have one and I'll sell a thousand boxes. That was absolutely stupid <laughs> of me to think that. And when the reality hit that, no, I'm not gonna sell a thousand boxes. Maybe I'll sell, you know, a few dozen tops. It, it is a hard ask to ask people to part with money, uh, a $99 box seasonally. It's a hard ask. So the marketing has to be there. I don't think I, I realized how much marketing played into it. And as much as you feel like your TikTok is on fire, as much as you feel like your Instagram is on point, it takes time to build those things and to get the word out. And trust me, I'm in radio. I understand about traditional marketing and how important it is. These things take time to build. Brand awareness takes time. So patience has been the biggest learning thing for me to be patient and keep at it, stay consistent, but don't stop. The consistency is key and being active on all of the social media platforms where you know that your clients could be. And you're right, brand awareness. You know the expression, an overnight success takes 10 years. Because it takes <laughs> that long to build the community enough that when you have a new service offering or product, like, I need to get that. I Sign me up right away. Right. I mean, my, my girlfriend, who is a um, um, licensing uh, expert in Montreal, she, she said to me, Sandra, you're not going to even make a penny for three years. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm going to have a new motorcycle by next summer. Come on. And uh, yeah, no, she's right. It's going to take time. <laughs> And what about the, the the radio side, Sandra? Like, uh, do you anticipate you still working with Kiss and continue doing the morning shows? Like, uh, going back to in person events, let's say in six months or a year from now. Uh, I want to be in radio for as long as they will have me, 
because some people treat it like a job. I have always felt radio was a calling and it gives me joy that out besides my two children, it brings me a joy that I can't describe to anybody. Let me just put it to you this way. No man has ever given me the joy that I feel when I have a great radio show. That is, it's not, it's hard to explain to anybody, but that is a, a high that I absolutely love and I'm kind of addicted to it. I wanna be in radio until, until I, I mean, they're not gonna keep me until I'm 80 because I feel like, you know, I'll probably be tired by then. But if I can, if I can go another 10 years, I would love to go another 10 years or as long as they'll have me. Yeah. You know, I, one of the reasons I started my, my first business as, as the band was I couldn't wait to wake up every day early, maybe not 3 a.m. early like you do, but wake up early, every day and work all day. I didn't want to go to sleep. I was so enthusiastic about what I do. And it sounds like that's what you're doing as well with the radio and with the cherry. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all about doing what you love. And uh, it's uh, such a gift to be able to go to work every day and have it not feel like a job. And I know that sounds cliche, but it is so true. I feel like I've sort of um, beat the odds in many ways because, you know, I used to always joke with my family. It's like, you know, maybe one day I'll get a real job as if radio wasn't a real job. Of course, it's a real job, but it just doesn't feel like one. It's way too much fun. I mean, I go into work every day. I have a few laughs. I get to give prizes away. Um, hopefully, I we have compelling conversations. We play some great music. And I get to do TikTok videos, which I love. So it's great. It's amazing the positivity and everything as well, Sandra, that you bring to it. Because like you mentioned in the beginning, back in sort of March, April of 2020, it was kind of hard to come to the table with positivity and happiness when things were just doom and gloom everywhere you look. So as much as I'm sure it was a hard time, I'm sure you really were a beacon to a lot of people who needed just anything happy just for a bit because it was just so depressing for a while, right? Oh my God, it was so depressing. And as de depressing as it was to, and, and really challenging it was to put on an entertaining show that was upbeat and fun and all of those things. Yes, people have said some really, really kind things like, you know, you know, you saved us, we feel connected and whatever. The truth of the matter is they saved me because I don't think I could have done a radio show from my home. I like that I still kept my routine. I got to wake up in the morning, put on my smoky eye, do my hair, wear pants and go into a studio and just feel normal for you know six hours a day or something like that. That in itself was such a gift to the point that some days I didn't even wanna go home because I just wanted to feel normal. And I knew when I came home, everything was quiet. There were way too many people walking their dogs in Stittsville, which was weird. And way too many families of five walking around, which you never see. Um, it was just such a weird vibe, but yeah, it was, uh, I got something out of it just as much as anyone else may have gotten out of it. If I understand correctly, Sandra, it was a lot of the consistency that helped you get through COVID. Was that, uh, is that a fair assessment? Oh, 100%. There are many other morning shows in, in this market and across Canada that actually work from home. And I can't tell you how challenging it is. I, I mean, some people love it. I could not imagine sitting at my kitchen table and doing a radio show and being in the same kind of zone that I would be in at the radio station. So that consistency was crucial. And I do believe, and I might be wrong, but I believe Rogers was the only radio station in Ottawa or the only, the cluster uh, that actually kept all of their talents that wanted to be in studio, in studio. And, you know, we have a news station, City News. Uh, so it was very important that we have these news people in studio doing their jobs and delivering the news. And uh, we even put shower curtains around them to protect them. So we meant business. Wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sandra, what do you think the community could do to help uh, other, let's, let's put the entrepreneur side on, what could the community do to help fellow entrepreneurs during these times? Well, I mean, just support each other. I mean, in my case, obviously, I have this box and I have an opportunity every single season to uh, curate items that could be local. Uh, there is a, some great jam companies that I found, some great candle companies. Uh, I, I met a great designer who made little scrunchies for our first box. Uh, you know, it might not seem like a lot, but a little goes a long way and a little extra push in marketing to give them shout outs, which, of course, we do. We'd love to give shout outs to the partners that we work with in our boxes. Uh, it's helpful. And, uh, you know, and in, in turn, they've given us some 
some marketing that was just lovely and they put the word out about us and auto entrepreneurs have been so generous that way uh and it's been very heartwarming because here I am, I don't know anything about anything and I'm asking for help and I'm calling up all these people that I know in Ottawa who I've met at various events who don't know Mary, me very well, particularly the women. I have to give out a shout out to the female entrepreneurs, especially in this city, who took the time to talk to me like I was an idiot because I needed them to and, and help me sort of understand how I start a business, what do I need to do? And there's been so many lovely female entrepreneurs in particular who've been instrumental really in not just helping to help helping me understand what I'm doing, but giving me confidence. And that was very key as well. That's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up, Sandra, about asking for help and knowledge. You know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't you go in to start a business, doesn't matter what industry you're in, you're not going to know everything about the marketing, the branding, the social, all that side. Ask for people who've already been there and done that. There's a lot of oh, yes. women entrepreneur groups. There's a ton of them around fantastic knowledge sharing there. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I have so many girlfriends <clears throat> who are in business. Uh, some of them who have retail clothing stores, I would bring them the box and they'd be like, girl, you are wrapping it all wrong. And they would show me how to wrap. I'd be like, I did not know that. Just little tiny things or you're over wrapping. You're spending way too much money on this. You don't need to do this. Do this. Just little tiny tips and tricks were so appreciated and saved me money, which I really like. Yeah. So Sandra, when you were first sort of mulling this cherry idea over at the beginning of the pandemic, what what was the catalyst that really made you think, you know what, let's do this. This makes sense. This is something I want to do. Uh, I was actually in Montreal with my business partner, Doug, because we had been talking about starting something for a little while now. I don't know anything about running the back end of a business, especially online. I know nothing. I just know how to make great TikTok videos, curate a fabulous box and tell everybody about it. Uh, I'm confident in that, those those little tiny skills that I have, but I needed somebody who could actually run the business. And, and Doug has been absolutely the best, the best at that. And uh, he's been um, very patient, which he absolutely needed to be with someone who didn't know what they were doing. So I definitely appreciate him. But we were in Montreal meeting with my girlfriend who uh, knows about marketing and so on and so forth. And we were having a, a lunch and we were talking about doing something. And she was actually the one who said, just do it, do this box. And then we sat down and we, the, the name came just like that. And then we started to brainstorm and it became easy. It just became really, really easy. Now, did I have a couple of glasses of wine in me? Maybe, but it still <laughs> came easy after that. <laughs> and if somebody wants to uh, say, Hey, you know what? I have a great product. I think it'd be great to be, be included in one of your seasonal cherry boxes. Are you accepting uh, suggestions oh from other people? You know, I actually, it's funny how many people have emailed me. They'll see our Instagram page or a TikTok page. Did I mention I love TikTok? Because I love TikTok. And our Facebook page. And they'll just slide into our DMs or they'll just email us directly and say, listen, I have this great idea. Um, actually, uh, we have just partnered with somebody for our winter box who came in that way as well. And she said, can I send you some samples? And I'm like, girl, I love samples. So yeah, absolutely. And that's, and, and, and there's some phenomenal, phenomenal quality Canadian products. And I would never have found her. She found me. And uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, I'm really proud of this one, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. No, fair enough. Save the surprise. Absolutely. So it's not a dirty surprise. <laughs> For somebody looking at these seasonal boxes, what would they expect in a sort of typical cherry box? Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll tell you what's in our, our current uh, cherry fall box. How's that? But I'm not going to tell great. you the dirty thing, the, the dirty stuff, because I don't think either one of you could handle it. I'm just kidding. I think you could. <laughs> uh, one of our, our marquee item is uh, an actual purse, an actual like a, a full sized crossbody purse. And it retails for $90. And it's from a Canadian company, a Pulp Pixie Mood. Uh, we have a, a soap company called the Indecent Soap company out of uh, Calgary. And she made these custom made soaps for us with little cherries in it. And it says, wash away the DNA. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> actually, hold on a second. I have it right in front of me. Uh, we have uh, a bracelet in there. We have, um, I mentioned the purse already. Uh, oh, and we have, oh, you're going to love this. I'm going to show, I'm actually showing you the products now. This is like the shopping channel. Here we go, everybody. And uh, I love my muff. 
only because I really want to say the word muff on your podcast. <laughs> and we have a couple of uh, products from this particular company as well. So it's been uh, it's been fantastic. We have eyelash serum, um, lip masks, those kinds of things. So it's 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 luxury items. Uh, there's a lot of beauty. There is a lot of you know accessories, things like that. And then we have like a hilarious dirty item. And when you see it, you'll go. <laughs> And you'll immediately want to try it. That's all I can say about that. <laughs> uh, Sandra, let's talk about some words of wisdom. Now that you've gotten your feet wet in the entrepreneurship circles, what would you advise people who are still at that cusp where they're thinking of starting a business? Like, what did have you learned that you can impart on others? Um, you know, I've had about, I would say, 25 phenomenally great business ideas over the last... 25 years. Some of them happen live on the air, you know, when you're like, hey, what if we did this? And then afterwards, I'd be like, wow, that's a great idea. Uh, I feel like I've always come up with all these great ideas, but then I talk myself out of it because it's like, oh, I don't do that. I'm a, I'm a radio broadcaster. I'm not an entrepreneur. And the fact of the matter is I can be whatever I want to be. And I think that people, if, they, if you have a great idea, just do it. Just do it. Um, I mean, make sure you know what you're doing, first of all, partner with the right people, partner with people that are smarter than you if you don't know what you're doing. I feel like that is great advice. Partner with people who have done it before, partner with people who can impart some wisdom on you, um, but but do it. Stop talking yourself out of a great idea. It reminds Even, me of uh, what yeah. you were talking about. Um, your friend in Montreal who has the marketing uh, entrepreneurship background was saying, you know, just like you said, just do it. Just Often do it. We hear people, they could plan for two years. It's not perfect and they don't launch yet because it's not ready. There's never been a better time. Oh, I completely agree. And even she said to me, she actually said, why don't you wait, take a little more time and develop it? And I thought, why? Why? Yeah, maybe, maybe it wasn't perfect. And maybe I made a lot of mistakes at the beginning because I did make a lot of mistakes. And I look back now and I'm like, oh my God, just such so many like really novice mistakes that I shouldn't have made, but I didn't make them in this box. And I feel like every time we do a new offering, it'll be better and better and better. And let's just forget about that first box. Okay, yeah. thanks. Uh, kind of thing. But uh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't wait because I would have been waiting forever and it never never would have been perfect. And I would have just given yeah. myself anxiety. So I'm glad I did it. I still got anxiety because I was hoping that it would be received well and it has been received well. And um, I'm actually super proud of what we put together. It reminds me of one of my first mentors many years ago, his name was Greg Weatherden, local Ottawa guy. He's like, you know, Jared, launch now, make it better later. I never forgot those words. You can always Right. And you know what else? Jared, forgive yourself too. That was a big part of it because I beat myself up over the stupid little mistakes that I made, like embarrassing mistakes. Like, how did I know that? You know, I didn't, the pictures that I put out of the first box, I didn't like those pictures. And then, uh, you know, I'd see them, I compare them to other subscription boxes. And it's like, well, you know what? I didn't do a good job with the pictures. This box, it definitely got better. And I mm -hmm. beat myself up over every stupid mistake. It's always a and work in progress. Like, uh, it's a work in progress. And that's what my, my girlfriend in Montreal kept saying that Sandra, it is, it is, it is exactly what you said. Every box you're gonna learn, every box you're gonna get better, and nobody is judging you as harshly as you are. So get over yourself. <laughs> Well, and it's one of those things you end up with that uh, sort of perfection paralysis if you're trying to perfect an idea before you launch it, because it's very unlikely you'll be able to perfect anything before launch. <laughs> because as any entrepreneur, any entrepreneur knows, it's trial by fire. So you need to learn from your mistakes. And if you don't allow yourself to make them, you're not going to learn from them. And you're likely going to just maybe not even bring your idea to fruition, right? Yeah. And transparency Own the fact that you're a new business, you're learning, you're trying and uh, customer services is great. You know, like in the first box, like I, I did a couple of stupid things. I, I missed a couple of items in some boxes and people didn't get the first time. So, I mean, I was driving all around the city, just giving people all the products, just take all the products, but I just want you to be happy. And I'm a, I'm a dummy who made a mistake and, and just be transparent about everything. And, and the forgiveness level is very high. And especially from women, I have to say, Women love to see other women succeed. And that has been so beautiful to see, again, all the support that I've received, not just from other entrepreneurs, but the women who have bought my box and who have sent me personal notes. that are like, you go girl, love the box, want to support you, love supporting local. It's, it's been very endearing and, and really um, inspiring 
to keep going. I love hearing that story. Like people want to support local, but they don't really know how. Those who could purchase your product or service is great. Uh, we, we talk about it often on, on social media. Promote other people. Say, hey, you know, you don't have to mention if you purchased or not. Say, hey, you know what? A, a friend of mine is launching a new business. Check it out. Here's the website. Here's the link to their Facebook or TikTok page. And just help spread the word. But yeah, I, that's my favorite. I love seeing that. I love seeing when I, I there's so many businesses, not just female entrepreneurs, but so many other entrepreneurs that give constant shout outs to other businesses. Yeah. And that uh, that's a beautiful thing. What comes around goes around. And it's it's really, you know, small business is the heart and soul of every community. Mm -hmm. And a good entrepreneur knows that. Yeah. Sean, you mentioned the word, uh, was it paralysis? Uh, what, what was that? Perfection, Perfection paralysis. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's brilliant. That's uh, really, really cool to have that. So we're, we're getting to the end of our podcast here today, Sandra. Was there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, you guys should buy my box. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> um, do you know, I didn't have any parting words um, for you, except um, I'm excited. I'm excited about 2022. I'm excited about all the possibilities. Um, I'm excited to see where the cherry grow goes. And I, I know that every single box is going to grow just a, a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I'm excited that I'm part of the Ottawa business community, mostly. Kind of, sort of. Learning. Well, we're very welcome, happy to welcome you here. And uh, we look forward to more success, Sandra, with you and Doug Bates Aww. as well. Oh, thank you so much. I'll pass it along to Mr. Yeah. Bates. Please do. He's, he's been a big supporter of ESACs for many, many years. And uh, yeah. probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. So. Yeah, excellent partnership. How there. nice is that of you to say? That's yeah. that's awesome. Um, Sandra, how can somebody get in touch with you? If somebody were to order a box of the cherry, where do they go? Uh, we have a website, thecherry.com. We are not, cherry is spelt not the way you think. It's C-H-E-R-I-E, -E, pardon me, C-H-E-R-R-I-E. -E. So thecherry.com, easy peasy. Uh, it's a subscription box. Order one and uh, you'll get it soon after. And uh, you mentioned this little thing called TikTok. How can people find you on TikTok? Ah, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on socials. It's the same across the board. It's at the cherry box. So we started a TikTok page because I just I don't I don't I don't know how you can be a business and not do a TikTok page. Uh, it is I I'm obsessed with TikTok business TikToks. I've learned from watching other subscription boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, not just i have not just been entertained by them. I've been totally entertained. But I've actually learned about packaging and boxing and uh, organizing and things like that. So it's been uh, instrumental actually in my education, believe it or not. So you can find the cherry at the cherry box on uh, the Tiki Talkie, as I like to call it. And it's uh, it's just a, it's just a lot of fun. Thank you, Sean. Anything? Any last closing minutes? Uh, no, that's great, Sandra. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll admit to you that I've been a big fan of yours uh, on your radio show for years and years. So I mean, it's no. lovely to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> and the cherry, I love the idea. I love the idea that it's uh, female focused and something different because there's so many of these subscription boxes and I'm like you, I love the idea of a subscription box because it's a little gift that just shows up. You never know exactly yeah, which day it's gonna show up and then you're like, yay, what's inside? Yeah. Um, especially okay. when it's a surprise, right? So, I mean, it's fun. I appreciate so I love that. And idea. you know what? I'm so happy you said that because um, monthly subscription boxes are great. There are a lot of work to put together. I didn't anticipate how much work it would take to curate a box. It does take a lot of work, way more than I anticipated. It's fun work, don't get me wrong, but it's a lot of deals and, and so on and organizing and shipping and making sure everything gets in on time and anxiety, making sure everything comes in on time when you need things to come in on time. Uh, the uh, I don't like the idea. I do and I don't like the idea of a monthly box. It's almost too much. You know what I mean? so that you're always getting a lot of the same things every month. So this way mm -hmm. you could do something a little more unique seasonally. Um, yes. Thank you for the compliment. I too enjoy uh, the cherry. It is, uh, it is the, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and thank you for listening to, thank you so much for listening, Sean. I really appreciate that. That's, that's <laughs> Absolutely. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Sandra. So today on the Pivoted Success Podcast, we were uh, featuring Sandra Plagakis of The Cherry, co-hosted by Sean Cochran from TCC Canada and myself, Jared Goldsmith from ESAC's Virtual Events. Sandra, thank you so much for your time. Good luck with the business. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And one day I'm going to take that hat right off your head and run away with it. You know what's <laughs> going to happen.
<laughs> I look forward to it. I see a TikTok video in your future for that. It's happening. It's uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Bye-bye.